I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's case, trial, controversy, allegations, however you want to term it, clearly, clearly uh, began to bubble during the time in this country when Me Too was sweeping the nation. 2017, guys like Harvey Weinstein, you know, hit with all these allegations of abusive behavior towards women. And what was interesting, while all this was happening, when you had guys like Harvey Weinstein, um, one accuser would come forward, and then other accusers would be empowered to join them. And, and all these men who were being accused, it wasn't just one woman accusing one man, it was woman after woman after woman accusing uh, men. And, and it was, and, and we saw it, and, and we saw it play out publicly. But in this case with Johnny Depp, it, it seems like it's been a little different up until this point. Uh, Johnny Depp, when he got on the witness stand, I think acknowledged that when he said, why would I, why would I start now? Why as a 50-year-old man would I all of a sudden start uh, abusing women? Uh, you know, there, and we've heard witnesses say no other women have come forward, et cetera. A big theme of Johnny Depp's. And it's what trying to separate himself from um, what was happening in 2016, 2017, 2018. And, and I think part of it is trying to reclaim his reputation, separate himself from people like Harvey Weinstein, and have people look at the case and what happened between him and Amber Heard a little differently. And we're seeing that play out. Now, let's get back to the Harvey Weinstein case, which we covered here on Court TV. Uh, and I was up there, and I remember in the, in the hallways, uh, one of the court watchers was Ellen Barkin, actress, actor, Ellen Barkin. I mean, legendary actor for, for years. High profile, big movies, big star. But she was one of the people standing online in the hallway to get into the courtroom to watch the Harvey Weinstein trial, where they did not permit cameras. Well, she was a watcher in that trial, and now she's a participant in Johnny Depp's trial, because apparently Johnny Depp and Ellen Barkin, former sexual partners. How about that? And then you see a picture of them together back in the 90s. And I say sexual partner because um, those are her words, her choice that she made to describe the nature of the relationship. Um, it wasn't a romantic relationship, it was a sexual relationship. Well, she testified today via deposition, so the jury got to hear uh, from Johnny Depp's former sexual partner, Ellen Barkin, and her take on Johnny Depp. Take a listen. <laughs> For how long did your relationship with uh, Mr. Depp remain sexual? Several months. Anywhere between three and five, six. And during that period, how often would you see Mr. Depp? That period when it was sexual? I'd say I'd see him three or four times a week. You, did you become aware that he... Uh, um, drink to excess. I was always aware. Okay, and, and can you explain how you were aware of that? He was drunk all the time, most, a lot of the time. And that would apply both to when you were initially friends and then later when it became sexual? Yeah. And what was he drunk? What, what was your understanding? What had he drunk to become drunk? He was a red wine drinker. Did there come a time... Ms. Barkin, when uh, Mr. Depp um, acted in a way that was out of control with you? Yes. Uh, Mr. Depp threw a wine bottle across the room, the hotel room, on one instance in Las Vegas while we were shooting Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Were you, was something about to happen? A fight was going on. Between you and Mr. Depp? No. Who was the fight between? Between Johnny Depp and his friends in the room, the assistant. Honestly, I don't remember. 
And the bottle that, do you remember sitting here today, Ms. Barkin, whether the bottle was full of wine or, or empty? I don't. <laughs> uh, sitting here today, Ms. Barkin, do you remember uh, whether the bottle hit you? No, it did not. Um, did the bottle hit anyone else? No, it did not. Approximately how far away from you was Mr. Depp when he threw the bottle? Across the room, so maybe by, by that break in the table or a little further down. It was a toss. And uh, sitting here today, if the bottle had hit you, would it have injured you? Sure. Ms. Barkley, was it your understanding back then that he was throwing the bottle at you? I don't know why he threw the bottle. And was it, when he threw it, was it in your direction? Yes. Were there other people standing around you? Yes. So he threw it in your direction at a, at a group of people? Yes. Ellen Barkin playing a role in this trial and uh, recounting a story that goes back to fear and low. That's the mid-90s we're talking about, uh, where all that took place. Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter. Joining us live from outside the courthouse in Fairfax County, Virginia. Great to see you, Chanley. Um, what more can you tell us about Ellen Barkin, the, the nature of this uh, testimony, and, and some context to what it means? Ellen Barkin, I guess she brought the fear and loathing to Fairfax County, Vinny. This was a much anticipated witness. And by video deposition, it was a short testimony, but it made an impact in the courtroom, a recognizable face. And just her demeanor, her attitude, her terse answers, her interrupting the attorneys to correct the attorney at certain times, it definitely perked up the jury inside the courtroom. And the gallery, pro Johnny Depp fans in the gallery had a couple of moments of laughter and murmurs as her testimony played in front of everyone. But her testimony served Amber Heard's defense because it corroborates and reemphasized several of their themes that we've been hearing is that Johnny Depp was always high and drunk and had problems with potential violence and jealousy. Let's take a listen. He's just a jealous man, controlling where are you going, who are you going with, what, what did you do last night. I had a scratch on my back once that got him very, very angry because he insisted it came from me having sex with a person who wasn't him. During the time that you were in a sexual relationship uh, with Mr. Depp, was it common for him to say things to you about being controlling, to use your words, or being jealous of you? Yeah, very common. And uh, when, in these instances, when Mr. Depp became jealous or controlling, did he also become angry? Yeah, and demanding. As you said, Vinny, it was a short-lived romance. He broke up with her and then sort of ghosted him to use nowadays terminology. But there was a moment of laughter when she did have to correct. Like you said, this wasn't a romantic relationship. It was a sexual relationship. Yeah, that was a fascinating part of, of, of the testimony and Johnny's reaction as well uh, inside the courtroom. <laughs> yeah. uh, a, a, big, a lot of witnesses today, uh, Chanley. What were some of, the, some of the big witnesses that we heard from? Yeah, Amber Heard's defense flew through about a dozen new witnesses today, one after the other, which helped kind of pick up the pace a little bit. Like I told you last night, the jury a little bit sleepy. Uh, they were still yawning today, but not as much with all the testimony thrown out them. But what this defense did today was to bring in former friends and representatives of Johnny Depp over the past couple of decades as far as his former talent agent, his business manager, and Adam Waldman, a familiar name, the person who made some statements the defense wants to claim that Depp told him to make uh, that are the basis of Amber Heard's defamation claims against Johnny Depp in her countersuit. So his deposition was played, of course, for this jury. He acknowledged he made those statements, but it was quite a limited testimony because attorney-client privilege, uh, he still represents Johnny Depp. This jury also heard from Tracy Jacobs, the former talent agent for many years, 30 years, represented Johnny Depp, helped make him the most famous movie star in the world, the highest paid. And she sounded a bit disgruntled today that 
she was fired uh, all of a sudden by Johnny Depp. But she talked about some of those issues of him being difficult to work with on movie sets, showing up late, his struggle with alcohol and drugs, uh, another common theme before this jury. And also, they heard from Johnny Depp's former business manager, Joel Mandel, who really raised some eyebrows in the courtroom when he told the jury how much money that Johnny Depp spent just monthly on staff. For example, he spent around $300,000 a month just on his personal staff. And he talked about how he, Johnny Depp had some dire financial circumstances over the years. And again, going back to those themes that Johnny Depp's downfall or his loss of movie roles and career many was not due to a 2018 op-ed written by Amber Heard, but his own behavior. All right, uh, Chanley, we're going to catch up with you in just a little bit, but I want to bring in a special guest joining us now in Orlando, Florida, human behavior expert Susan Constantine back with us. Susan, Ellen Barkin testified today, and um, I don't have the training, the expertise, the insight that you do, but I'm watching her, and there's something, there's, an, there's a little bit of an edge to, to the way she's testifying. Can you unpack it for me tonight, please? Yeah, so obviously that she has a lot of hostility. I would call her almost a borderline hostile witness. And she has strong history that she has never let go. And that anger is being shown in her. Did you see when she was pursing her lips? Um, that is in how she feels about Johnny Depp. That is her disagreement. She doesn't like him. And then her her um, comments about, no, I did not. Who else said that? Clinton, I did not have sex with that woman. And she's doing the same thing, but once she says it, there is anger in her voice. You can see at times where her eyebrows will kind of pinch together and her facial expressions become much more animated. So this is a woman scorned from way back never let it go it's still haunting her today and she i don't she seems to be enjoying the payback so susan you're also a, a jury expert as well mm -hmm. and the jury's watching this right the same way we're all watching it the jury yes. is watching her so do, do you think that the way you explain that is something that they will pick up by watching this um that that sort of attitude that that sort of underlying thing or do you think they just kind of listen to the words and and oh okay so Johnny threw a bottle Johnny was jealous uh, and that's that's the takeaway for the jury yes yeah, so one of the things that I look for uh, Vinny is when they're putting that pen to the paper are they making note of it because this is what's really important they've been watching and listening to this over time and here's the other thing those jurors have heard most of this stuff repeated over and over again and what I think that they did is they probably peeped up when they heard her because of her attitude. You know, most jurors are very visual. 61% of them are visual. Uh, I, I think it's like 18% are more auditory. So you combine those two, it perks up their attention. And I think the fact that she's a big star, I think that they paid attention to this one. Some of the other ones, they were sleepers. Now, the... the the, the one thing that really caught my attention was when she corrected um, her testimony from the nature of the relationship. It was not romantic. She said romantic first, but then she said, no, no, not romantic. Can we, can we change that? It was sexual. <laughs> what are we supposed to take away from that? Well, when she's telling you, she's defining that she wants you to understand we did not have a relationship. In other words, that she didn't have this emotional bond with him. Not so much that he didn't have it with her. What she's really saying is I didn't have it with him. So I want to take control. And I just want to let you know, this is just a fling. It's just sexual. But, you know, it's amazing that she would have even admitted it as a woman. I wouldn't have gone there. Yeah, it was a fascinating moment. All right, Susan's going to stay with us this hour. When we come back, um, we're going to talk about when Johnny met Amber because there was testimony today about um, Johnny and, and sort of a change in his life. And this came from people that represented Johnny Depp. And it seems like it is all focused around the time when he met Amber Heard. So we're going to kind of dive through that testimony, dive through that timeline, and try to figure out what was going on.